Hey kids, this is Aaron from the podcast that wouldn't die. And Kevin and I use Zencaster. You think you're better than us, that you're using something else? You're wrong. Zencaster's the place to be. Who are you to deny it? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. If you thought about podcasting before and realized that you need a lot of different tools and services, those days are over. With Zencaster's all-in-one podcasting platform, you can create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code DIEHARD and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same experiences we do for all our podcasting and content needs. It's time for you to share your story. Only a fool will give up a chance for a 30% discount. Hi, hello, how are you? It's Daryl here and I am the host of Cage Rage, a Nicholas Cage podcast. On this podcast, come and join me on my journey to true cage nirvana. What is that you ask? Well, it's the most profound, spiritual, emotional, elite state of being achieved only by, you guessed it, watching every movie the greatest actor of any generation has ever been in. Each week I'll be joined by an amazing guest as we talk all about the man I call the Golden Hog of Hollywood and dive unnecessarily deep into a Nick Cage film to learn a little more about this renegade of cinema. If you like your movie podcast a little different and a lot silly, we just love Nicolas Cage. Come and join me over on Cage Rage, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, keep on, keep on caging. It's all you have to do. In the dark past, humans were their prey, and blood was their life. I'm Rado. Find him before killing begins again. Now in modern day Transylvania, eternal evil has reawakened. Welcome to the latest episode of the podcast that wouldn't die. I'm your host, Kevin. With me as always is Aaron. How do? This week! Merry, merry after Christmas, merry after, I don't know, the Feast of the Epiphany, La Bufana, whatever. Uh, that's all well and good, but it's probably going to be President's Day before this episode is released. So I appreciate. Well, Merry President's Day! Thank you, Teaching World. <laughs> Indeedly, do. Is it uh, Happy th- President's Day or Merry President's Day? I think it's President's Day greetings. And and greetings to you, sir, <laughs> on this five President's Day. Exactly. Yeah. There it is. Greetings now we're talking. Time. This week on the podcast that wouldn't die, we're discussing subspecies. Oh, sweet Jesus. I think this may be the first one we've done willfully and knowledgeably where it is a straight to video selection. So I, I, Aaron's I to blame. T- this is this was the golden age of straight to video. Golden yeah. age. <laughs> Okay. Full Moon Entertainment. <laughs> yep. Knocked out some dynamite films right to dynamite? the store. I dynamite? don't even understand why there wouldn't be a dedicated section. Because I would literally like look at the horror sections and I'd flip it over to see if it was Full Moon Entertainment. That's dynamite that's has a homunculus in it. Homunculi? <laughs> homunculi 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 as i've often heard it said each week on the podcast that wouldn't die we discuss guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the horror and sci-fi genre with a comedic twist aaron how's it going with you it's all right i called off sick the first day back uh after (laughs) christmas break (laughs) were you actually sick I was not sick, but I had friends in town and I agreed to take one of them to the airport. Now, I didn't say that the airport was 10 minutes from my house, but (laughs) I did call in for a staff meeting. They're like, Aaron, 
there's plenty of time for you to still show up for the team meeting at the end. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing where it's like, I'll go to like teacher in services or whatever. And if it's on the day of a staff meeting, I'm not going to that. I'm going home. I'm going home. Now, mean principals will make a point to pull you aside and say, uh, you're expected back for the staff meeting after school. Just, just so you know. Meeting after school, Nazis. That's... Is your principal? <laughs> <laughs> they do that as well. Rumor <laughs> has it, sweet Jesus. I have to tell you something. Uh, you may not know this, but you probably do. I consider myself a bit of a hat aficionado, if you will, because as a bald-headed man, if I go outside without one, my head peels like the skin from the guy in RoboCop where he gets dipped in the toxic waste. Shit, are you going to start are you going to be one of those dudes with the weird beard with the cap driving like a convertible MG? Is that going to be you? I'm not taking it off the table. It's I a did, possibility. I didn't know that you were a hat aficionado. I knew well, okay. that on occasion I may flip my head around at a family gathering and think what the hell is Kevin wearing? <laughs> this okay. Maybe this is a we thing. Out hat. Were you at the haberdasher the other day, selecting? I don't know a bonnet for uh, the upcoming President's Day holidays. Is Target considered a haberdashery? That's my question. Maybe. Do they if, have if, a wide selection of man hats that don't involve a snapback? <laughs> Enough to you know, for my taste, is basically what it is. Now, I have to draw the distinction. I'm not one of those guys who's wearing like a suit and a baseball cap, right? I'm not wearing baseball cap. I'm not adding a baseball cap. To, I'm not Ron Howard. That is the apex right. of fishery. I agree. I agree. Now, and I don't really wear hats indoors, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to hide the fact that I don't have any hair. It is literally a utilitarian purpose, okay? So a do-rag would do. A, do a do rag would get if the it job had, like, done. A Chargers emblem is it, would that be a thing? Emblem or no? I'm ready to rock it. I'm not. There's no shame in my do. game. All right. Absolutely. The reason why I mentioned this. I'm shopping this, this week. I'm shopping this pl week. Please do. The reason why I mentioned this is my wife. I was at Target recently. My wife and I were looking at some of the the vast selection of hats, and it's I have gone home. Jackets. And so far, absolutely, I was about to curse two minutes into this. And and I bought a black cowboy hat that I am going to be wearing to school tomorrow. This is not Boom. just some sexual fantasy role play with you and your wife. This is going to actually be seen out of doors. I think a little column A, a little column B, right? Dude, you need to get one of those I hats and the skinny suit and be like a rude boy, like like you're you just stepped out of the specials or something. My, why not? Rudy, absolutely. Now, that's a good looking hat ensemble. Now I have to say, a little nervous because no, I've rocked many hats to to school. I have not rocked a full blown cowboy hat yet. So I we'll we'll see. An eye patch too and a hook. Why not? Be like <laughs> why not? Absolutely. Why not? If now, man, saying country. There you go. Absolutely. Now you're you're speaking my language. <laughs> absolutely. So I I literally wear it from my car to my classroom. Then I take it off and it sits there until it's time. Unless I have like you know I have to be outside, I have duty or something. Then I'll throw my hat on. If there's a fire drill, then I'll throw my hat on. Otherwise, I'm not wearing it indoors. So we'll we'll see what kind of reaction I get. And I'll have to let you know. Come, you know, 745 in the AM. So. Oh, I think we're related because I'm pulling all kinds of shenanigans with the kids. And they're, and they're quite vocal. They're vocal in what way? Miss. Miss, what are you doing? You look crazy, miss. <laughs> <laughs> you look crazy, miss. Miss, Sweet I liked Lord. your hair better when it wasn't all white. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've often said, I've often said, uh, last year an eighth grade student said, Mr. Doherty, why are your jeans so tight? 
he got an F for the day. <laughs> now, that'll get you an F every time. And okay. He gave you six hours of self reflection on top. Of it it, it did decided, indeed. You decided to double down and go full village people. Is that it? It wasn't like by design. Yeah, I didn't. A vest and no shirt is a, a leather one, perhaps. Is that next? It, who one? am I, Aaron Neville? <laughs> is that the? Yeah, I mean, who's to like say? Like it is. Why not? He was very successful. Did I even tell what our I podcast's about? Removed. By the way, I don't know. If, I think I was in a fugue state. Each week on the podcast that wouldn't die, we discuss guilty pleasures and forget. I already mentioned this. See, this is what happens when you reach a certain age. I, I don't know what I'm saying half the time. Why don't we yeah, jump no right in? Longer. Are we going to start scripting this son of a bitch? <laughs> Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Uh, give us the 30 second synopsis of subspecies, please. Ugly vampires versus sexy vampires in Romania. Sexy. Pretty girls have to die, and girls with butchy haircuts live to tell another tale. The end. <laughs> That'll do it. Now, um, I had seen this box in the Blockbuster oh, Video oh, Store. Oh, 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 oh. Are you saying you've never seen some species before? I had never seen. I thought it was like a Gremlins movie. I oh, thought it was about little yeah. creatures. I think I've seen a, a fair chunk of them. There's a ton of them. There's a ton. There's literally a, a metric ton of subspecies movies. And there is. Free on Fubu. But I thought honestly, because on the cover, there's a bunch of little like critters or gremlins or whatever the hell those things are i thought they were the uh, titular subspecies but i was mistaken i was mistaken it's about vampires it's va the vampire Sex the vampire vampires versus drippy drooly vampires with some kind of <laughs> chromosomal issues i wrote that down there's a lot of drooling in this movie for some yes, reason there's a lot of slothosaurus Unnecessary uh, Slophosaurus. <laughs> when is it ever really necessary, to be honest? But do you even it remember? A Sam Raimi film. There needs to be somebody <laughs> dripping something into somebody's mouth that you do not want. Absolutely. Now, do you remember when the first time was you saw a subspecies? Dude, it was before, it was in the 90s. And this girl that I used to work with, we used to go hit the video store and then we'd just like drink beer and we'd like watch two or three of them. And then my ex-husband would like pick me up when he'd off shift at work and I'd be like passed out. Whee! <laughs> that sounds like a cry for help, in all honesty. <laughs> it was pre-children. Oh, sweet Jesus. I mean, unless El Torito was having a happy hour, which they used to have a great little snappy hour on Fridays back in the 90s. Could be. Could be. El Torito means... Like whole buffets. And you just get, went in there and had your margaritas and your Mexican beer, and that was your dinner. Boom. <laughs> I learned El Torito mean? means the little bull in Spanish, by the way. I don't know why I didn't oh, know that before that. Toro, Torito. Yes. Good Lord. I, I, anyway. I had a neighbor, and uh, she had a kid named Ramon, but they called him Ramoncito. Ramoncito. Absolutely. Uh, why don't we jump right into the highlights, Aaron? Since you're, you're the champion of Full Moon, Full Moon Entertainment subspecies, Dude. Hit me. What do you got? Not just subspecies, baby. You got to go back to the puppet masters, the doll men, all of this. <laughs> I, I do not have to do that, as a matter of fact. But go ahead. Oh, my God. Is it because this is the 90s and you only like bad late 80s? Is it too far? This you know what it is? It's, it's a bridge too far. Because it's like, on some level, and maybe I'm crazy, maybe. I feel like... It, I'm not taking you it off the table. Drop it at Target. You don't know. Absolutely. <laughs> you, I'm going to send you a picture and you're going to love it. <laughs> uh, I feel like if a movie was in the theater, it has a sheen of, of respectability to a certain degree. You know what I mean? It means multiple people and pass through multiple hands saying, yes, this is worth, you know, publicizing, promoting, 
You know what I mean? Paying theaters to show it, such as such as it is. When you get to straight to video, now it's just the filmmaker and the blockbuster who does not give a good goddamn what they put on their shelves. I that's think, that's the issue. I think you have to remember. Don't do not besmirch direct to video. You forget <laughs> the power of the video store. Sure, you could have gone to the movies, but why do that when you, for the less you can go get three movies and sit in your living room? This was the oh. beginning. They didn't have enough crap. You'd go to the new releases, and there'd be like six movies and six copies, and at five o'clock on a Friday, they're all gone. I, I don't know if all six copies of subspecies. We're gone. No, Let, let's. <laughs> these would not be like the new releases. They're, they mean the, the direct from the theaters. They finally yes. arrived. So you, they needed content. Yes, so that is quality, true. I cannot say that this is somehow worse than some of your, what's that Chris Sarandon with the, the vampire and the kids are next door? Are you high? So you're saying this is better than Fright Night? Is that what you're trying to yeah. say to me right now? This is, I would say this is better. This is better than Fright Night. I would say this is a better than a lot of those late eighties. Uh, what was the Dracula musical? Oh well, <laughs> what was it? Rockola or something like that? Rockula. 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 That that movie's a piece of crap. Rockula is better than this, but Rockula was the theater. I, okay, I'm I'm gonna sp give you a little spoil alert. If I could write a review for subspecies, it would be stupid and boring. Boom. Oh, I'm sad for you. I'm sad for you. Boom. These sons of bitches knocked this out in four days, and there's a <laughs> linear story. Uh, there are some <laughs> random boobs that they threw in. I think I I honestly feel that like at the end they realized you know. We don't have any boobs. We're going to have to do a reshoot and through the, I don't know, the Polish girl in the dungeon with just slits right where her tits are. <laughs> they How took. How did we forget that? How yes. did we forget that? Reshoot. They, they took a man's red, some kind of flannel, and then just took garden shears to it, basically. And so it's perfectly that. placed. <laughs> One little nipple. Squeezing through each little, yes. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's so it's so awkwardly placed because the minute yes. she stands up, you can't see anything. So, right. So like they had a grip going over and like just re opening it up, so there's just a nip popping yes. out on each side. That's correct. It was that is correct. like Freddy Krueger with his nails just stroked the front of the shirt. <laughs> I don't even think she was wearing that shirt when she was abducted by no. the vampire. Who knows where that came from? No one knows. It looks like a, a Hugh Hefner gown or something. Maybe he's it's something. here. Can we also talk about this movie's 82 minutes long? Dude, <laughs> see, that's the beauty of the old horror films. Even if you didn't like it, you were done an hour and a half. <laughs> Not even an hour and a half. Oh, Not yeah. even. If this, honestly, this would, <laughs> this would qualify for like, uh, you know, the Academy Award shorts. You know what I mean? It's like, it's that short is what we're talking about. Short. It is four minutes less than, than 90 minutes. It is not a short. It is eight minutes less than oh, 90 whatever. minutes. I looked, I, and that includes... That not my forte. That includes all the credits. The, the 15 minutes of slow crawl at the beginning and the end of this movie. So there you go. It's really, it's really an episode of uh, of uh, Law and Order. Is basically what we're looking at here. Okay, sweet Dude, Jesus. That would have been that would have made it better. Or Fox and Mulder if they just rolled in. David I have Tony. to. Hey, <laughs> it is. It's an X Files episode. <laughs> a canceled. They basically read this script for X Files and said hard pass. Dude, Take another swing at this, and it became this. a movie. No, I could see this as an X file. You get rid of the dark haired girl with the short hair, the the fake Courtney Cox, and that's Gillian Anderson. 
Boom. And and the company's there to save the day. She was I mean, off at a forensics conference in in Bucharest and uh, took a day trip with some anthropologists and disappeared. Here's the thing about this: you keep besmirching the short-haired girl. She was by far the prettiest of the three, even with her short hair. She yeah, was mu- she hair. was much prettier. So they were just trying to make the, make a point that long hair blonde, loose and dead, short hair, <laughs> dark hair means you smart. But then she got all vamped up at the end anyway. So f*** off, you're all dead. But I mean, that's true. That, that was a twist. That was a twist. I think the she reason was also... She trying to be a Courtney Cox. I just want to say that. Back when Courtney Cox had her short hair dancing with myself and all that. That's the vibe I got. Uh, so you... Wait a minute. Okay. So you think it was a concerted effort. Again, Courtney Cox in the Dancing in the Dark video was an unknown that Bruce Springsteen pulled up on stage to do a crazy dance with. She wasn't wasn't famous. She was hired for that role. Yeah, okay, she was an actress. Some rando biatch. Hey, little girl, come up here. This is all just serendipitous. Come on up. She might have well have been, frankly. This was not friends, Courtney Cox. This is, <laughs> come on. she had the short hair. She had the short hair. And, and she, she liked to wear a little crazy hat. She was wearing an Indiana Jones fedora when she stepped off the train from Romania, where the hell she was, doing her thing. So we have that hat connection. Is this going to be a a hat thing? Are you then going to shave your wife's head, give her the fake Courtney Cox, and now she's wearing hats everywhere? (laughs) Why would I need to shave her head, first of all? Why is it always taking a dark turn? Yes, there's no head shaving. Sweet Jesus. Let's but talk about the movie. It's up in a little boy cut. So you guys can be like, I don't know. Are they brother and sister? Are they husband and wife? Who can tell? Like the white stripes? Is that what you're saying? It's like the white stripes. Yeah. Good Lord. Okay. Let's start <laughs> with this ridiculous. Because it starts off in, in a haunted, in the spooky castle. Spooky. in Filmed in Romania. Yes. And we turn over and we see the vampire guy. I don't know what he had, like a popsicle or something. He was kind of like licking some weird, like, I don't know, a parfait. You know, I don't know what he was doing. It was a ring pop. It, it, yes. A ring pop they stole from the Pope. With the blood Is that what it was supposed to be? Saints. Yes. yes. And he was like, kind of, and, and then, of course, the grand reveal was that was Angus Scrim from the Phantasm movies, literally wearing like, it was, you didn't recognize him? The old man? It was the, t- the, the tall the man. No, the no, tall no, man. This movie, was it like the little helper dude? No, it was the oh, king of the vampires. The oh my yes. God. I thought he was just some old drag queen. He looked what like, because he was wearing Amadeus's wig. For oh, some this wig and literally this lipstick I just put on now. Yes. Blood he was red, me- running yes. into the lines of the cracks of your lip. I didn't know that was Angus Scrim. Did I? I was Angus Scrim. He was done by lunch. Because, you know, basically five seconds later, his crispy son with the Nosferatu fingernails uh, does him in. And we have to talk about that whole ridiculous scene. At Dude. The I, I love how they they capture he captured his son who's gone haywire second yes. uh, the Pope's ring pop, uh, but he captures them using the the Road Runner and Wiley e. Coyote uh, a book of how to capture people where it's like oh the cage fell on me but I'm a I'm a effing vampire but then all of a sudden he's popping his fingers off that was so you're right I was vampires. Like, I'm I just Vamp- like my nails sometimes. I don't go for the first knuckle. It was it was so bizarre. You're right. Vampires have certain abilities in the folklore. I don't remember them literally snapping off the first knuckle and throwing it on the floor. I was like, what is he doing? And from those things, it was kind of oozing around. A little crazy gremlin like jumped up and he's like, Vampire free me. Boy babies. Little tight. I mean, I don't even know They're what the six they, inches tall. How, well, how are they going to lift that up? They're six inches tall, but you're, I don't know, a Hollywood five six. So what? 
how are they going to lift up something better than you? Right. What, 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 what? Well, yes. So he, he orders his little minions to kind of, I don't know, pull the crank, whatever the hell it is. The king of the vampires is just sitting there going, okay, I get, go ahead and free him. I'm just going to sit here and do zippity doo da. Free the person. The time. I read my lines. <laughs> He's like, I'm not even going to get up from this chair. Regardless. Motivation, who needs it? Go over there and pop one of those homunculuses with your little pointy boot. <laughs> Pretty much. And then he gets stabbed, and that's the end of Ang Angus Scrim. So he's the king of the vampires is, is friendly because he has the bloodstone, his, his ring pop. If he licks on that a little bit, then he doesn't have to suck the blood <laughs> of he innocent Romanians. The blood of all the saints. Yeah, there yes. was like some, the story goes that some jackass heard that the Pope in Rome versus the Pope who's hanging out in Maui, uh, but the Pope in Rome had the bloodstone with all that. So he went and got that. And in exchange, now the vampires don't need to feed on the, the neighborhood folks. Right. That's a, that's a hundred percent what it is. So the king of the vampires, everything's been cool in Romania for hundreds of years since they made this bargain. But he's got his crispy son, who's all jacked up with some kind of pituitary issue. He's like Rocky Dennis from Mask. Uh, Dude, that's and, all I kept thinking about. I'm like, is this Eric Stoltz? <laughs> it was Stoltz. <laughs> It was Eric Stoltz in his most triumphant role. It was a role. full mask thing. How come all the other vampires look normal, but he looks yes. like mask? Yeah, that's correct. That's 100% correct. He's jacked up because uh, he's evil. His brother looks like he's in Twilight. You keep saying that. That is ridiculous. <laughs> this guy wishes he was in Twilight. Okay. He's a little older than Twilight. A little longer than Tooth. Remember that band, The Romantics? What I like yes. about you. Yes. What I like about it you. It looks like if one of the the members of that band was a fact <laughs> a young vampire. Maybe the bass player. Maybe the bass player. Yeah. Who's to say? <laughs> uh, right. So the, the the one jacked up son who is like, I've got the bloodstone, but I still like to suck people's blood for no reason. Like he's just, I like sucking blood from from nubile ladies. I ain't gonna suck from the ring pop. Here's the thing. This Lay it on this me. totally reminded me. I feel like later movies borrowed from this because this is how <laughs> iconic this is. Okay. Did you ever watch True Blood? Yes. So later on in True Blood, you had these factions. That, that felt like they should live their best kind of wild predatory self and I not see. be tied down to drinking synthetic blood out of a jar. Right. So you so think that's, that's what it is? Well, that's what it was reminding me of. He's doing both, really. If, I, he is. if I'm too lazy to get up, I'll suck on the ring uh, on the Pope's ring pop. Otherwise, you know, I'm getting down. I'm getting busy. It was so ridiculous. So, okay. And then the, the reveal is the, what the hell was he? He was some kind of an anthropologist. No, he wasn't an anthropologist. He was just studying uh, animal life. He was like a zoologist, but only nocturnal animal life. Mm. So that, he's the other son of the king of the... Well, what, <laughs> the what is there? <laughs> secret nocturnal animals in Romania. You got some, what, a woodchuck? You got one of them, like, Woodchucks. a wolf or something? Hungry like, like the what, wolf. What animals? Then there's the unicorn. What else is <laughs> running around at night in the forest in Romania? Well, okay, look. There are, there are many nocturnal animals in nature, okay? Now, if there's some rare species that are only home to Romania, it's possible. I'm not an expert. Who's to say? <laughs> so, but I like how the king of the vampires has no accent and the good looking, son, the quote unquote, good looking vampire, no accent, but the jacked up, crazy mutant, <laughs> crazy accent, crazy accent. I'll always love it when they do that. We're, we're brothers, but how come I have no accent? 
<laughs> Who's to How say? About- his fingers were 12 inches long, like Count Orlock. Yes. His mother was just like, I don't know, 21 Jump Street. Totally. <laughs> he was Richard Grieco. 100%. It was, it was Richard Grieco and yep. uh, Willem Dafoe as Nosferatu. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. I mean, you. Identical brothers all the way. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, I mean, that's what it was. He had long, old, crazy nails. Not just nails. Like, his fingers were all long and crazy. The nails yeah. actually weren't that long. I don't know what was that. They were like Lee Press on nails long, but he had the crazy fingers. Even after he snuck, snapped off a bunch to free the humunculuses that live in his fingers. <laughs> Humunculus. <laughs> And the, the opening scene, we're still four minutes into the movie. The opening scene <laughs> is is like a cacophony of bizarre droolings, right? The evil, the evil vampire constantly just like letting a line of blood drool just drip out of his mouth. For no, he's like, oh, yes, his drool is drool. <laughs> Like, what is happening? Bloody slop. I'm like, you haven't even yes. Do, is it just bad dental hygiene? Is it flint gum? It's like it's gingivitis. Videos I watch uh, from Asia where there's just one tooth, but it's just plaque, and they have to yes. sit in there with the drill. Maybe that's, that's it. They call me yuck mouth because I don't brush. I like my teeth like this. They call me yuck mouth. Hey, how's your my little kiss? Yes. So I, that, oh God, I love public service announcements. And <laughs> don't be a dragon lady. The dragon lady. Oh, uh, smoking. They hit kind of drag. Oh, There's interesting. Some um, anti Asian comet, the dragon. It seems lady. like it. Seems vaguely anti Asian. Very they upsetting. Taking a drag. Gotcha. No, when. Saturday morning cartoons, right? You'd wake up early to watch cartoons. Between the cartoons, there would be crazy little mini cartoons, public service announcements, talking about, hey, get off the couch, fat ass, and go for a jog or something. How about eat some fruits Timmy and vegetables? Has no friends because he's fat. <laughs> basically, basically. And one of them was brush your goddamn teeth, you filthy bastards. No question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that and make my, my ringtone. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the rest of the evening searching for the music of Yuck Mouth. You can find. I got some steak in my teeth. Got some chicken too. Ooh, there's a cavity. Hey, that's new. Yeah, you can find Yuck Mouth. <laughs> you can find Yuck Mouth on YouTube at this very moment, and I Please, highly I'm recommend. Find it. I'm gonna put it on our ticker talker. Please do. It's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is good stuff. Um, well, back okay. in the old days, yes, cartoons were. Uh, there was a very short window on Saturday mornings for cartoons. And yes, part of it is they wanted to restrict the ads, and because it was just nonstop, the most ridiculous, stupid cartoons. They wanted you to learn something. So we had Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock. There Absolutely. were all these little things, the more you know, that they, they, they try to slide in there besides just cereal ads and mm-hmm. toys that you'll shoot your eye out with. What are they? T- I mean, literally growing up, there was a cereal called Honey Smacks with the, with the frog telling you, you know, eat the Honey Smacks, whatever. When it first came out, it was called Sugar Smacks. Because they didn't give a good goddamn. No. They're like, how about just a bowl of sugar for breakfast? Mmm, delicious. Oh, no. They were not regulating shit because I remember we used to buy King Vitamin. I believe it was Vitamin Sugar. <laughs> it was literally the sweetest cereal ever. And then we would pour an additional cup of sugar, right? <laughs> a full we're- cup. A full cup. Absolutely. We're, we're like- we wouldn't drink the milk, but the, the, it'd be so much where it could no longer dissolve into the milk. So they'd just be the, <laughs> the milk will evaporate before it has a chance to dissolve that much sugar. It's a line structure at the bottom. It's a science experiment. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but I'll tell you this, since we're going on this jag for 20 minutes. By the 80s rolled around, they didn't give a damn. All the cartoons were based upon toys. 
every G.I. Joe, the Transformers. Every year, there'd be a new crazy cartoon show that was just a vehicle for selling you know action figures. Lay it on me. Cable. Then came Cable. There you go. It used to be it used to be so tightly controlled. TV was going to destroy your children, rot their brains, and then they and they were right. They were right. <laughs> they were a hundred percent correct. They were a hundred percent right. There were no cartoons on Sunday. You got about two hours after school, and then it was <laughs> off adult time. Pretty yeah. much, it's a sad There's situation. None of this twenty-four hour twelve cartoon. Channels. Now. Now, treat those cartoons like gold because you had, it was a finite resource. <laughs> Mom, my show's on. I can't take the trash out now. <laughs> Pretty much. Anywho, okay. So the three heroines arrive from America. It's actually only two arrive from America and meet their friend, the Romanian exchange student uh, that they knew. And they're there to, st- I love this. They're there to study folklore, just like the, the, the ladies from Candyman. Like they're doing their dissertation on the local See, I folklore. Was thinking midsummer. Well, there's that that as well. It's a reoccurring uh, theme. Midsummer, and maybe th- that little friend. Maybe she was always a vampire. I don't know. Maybe she lured them out. Oh, so so then there's the hardcore midsummer connections, is what you're saying. Ooh, it was all a trick. Why not? Why not? Maybe. Anything's possible. Who are you to deny it? Who not uh, not me? I can't deny it. Absolutely. So this is this movie is important because literally this is the first among the first uh, American films filmed in Romania after the fall of the Soviet Union. So they could just do whatever the hell they want. Yes. So they could do whatever they wanted. It's it's a free ride. They're like, please come and give us your American dollars. Oh, absolutely. Yes. The director do whatever you was want. very nervous about filming here. And then once he got there, he realized, do whatever you want. Take, I'll t- do what you want. On the ruins, like the <laughs> ancient paintings on fire. We want the American lolly. Make a snuff film. We don't care at this stage of the game. We will take this whatever. The, the beginning of Hostel. Here we go. Pretty much. Pretty much. So they, they're I there to study. To give about so they didn't have to pay people afterwards. They That's correct. It's a two <laughs> <laughs> it's a sad situation. So they're there studying folklore. They're staying literally at a hostel that's like an ancient castle or something. And the only other guy staying there is the who's obviously the the brother, right? There's no suspense. He's obviously right. the the quote unquote I keep saying quote unquote good looking brother from America who happens to be visiting as well. So and that this movie is fucking ridiculous. Then it's just, <laughs> there's a scene, jump in anytime, but there's a scene where they're like looking at a castle, broad daylight. They're like, huh, I think I'm just going to take a nap. Good idea. And they all just lay down in the, <laughs> at, at two in the afternoon. Did they have a cup of special tea right before? <laughs> Who's to say? It, like, And they fall asleep. And literally, like, the Romanian girl goes, oh, it's been two hours. Two hours of sleeping in the field? I mean, what the hell's happening here? What were you, were you roofied? How anyway. about, even though it's the 90s, uh, apparently in this uh, town, whenever anyone gets sick, then they got to dig up bodies and drink a tea made out of their hearts. Oh, 100%. Yes, this, yes, this was because we hear someone might be sick and we want to take pictures of crazy uh, gypsies uh, and frightened horses. Yes, yes, we, we have a doctor, but of course we have to go through the the local customs of I ride a horse over your grave. And if the horse doesn't want to go on it, then obviously you were or are a vampire. So we must dig you up, desecrate your corpse. Uh, while your family cheers on. I don't know what the story is. So we all have to have a sip. <laughs> that's what, what, what is it? They boil your heart. And make the the dead, they make a tea and it'll cure whatever ails you. That's is right. basically what it is. got the menstrual craps. Oh, f- we got to get the horses out. <laughs> go get your grandma. Let's go. We have to do this goddamn thing again. Oh, yes. shit. Rotavirus is coming. Son of a bitch. We're just not going to have enough fresh hearts to dig up. Right. 
hangnail, you know, eczema, whatever it is, whatever you need to do, you know, halitosis. Uh, yuck mouth. <laughs> yuck mouth. We got we to desecrate a few more corpses, for God's sakes. Now, during the festival, I don't know if you noticed this, multiple people are killed by the one vampire in town in full view of 30 people. And no one seems, they're dancing and celebrating. Romanian girl gets, ah, screams. He's biting her. Party must go on, evidently. Well, that's what's confusing me, because literally then she's a vampire. So they didn't try it. So she, he bit her, she died, and all popped back by the time the party was over. Is, is that what we're our understanding? Is that what's going on? This movie is freaking, like, it's light. It's light. There ain't a whole hell of a lot that goes on in this it's movie. It's a very straightforward, linear story. Linear story. The, the gypsy woman is killed at the festival. Their fr- you think, well, what happens? The, the friend scratches her arm on an old door at the ruins, leaving a huge crazy lesion. Right. And then Radu, the evil vampire, keeps sneaking in her window to drool on her arm. Uh, and, and, <laughs> oh, and he's, he's blopping out about as much as he's, it, it, he's sucking out. <laughs> he is! It's, it's blop, blop. It's blop, like, blop, Ooh. fizz, fizz. It's, it is! If you, like, have a child with a cold who's also teething, it's just stuff yes! pour, pouring out. It's very unpleasant. A, a toddler does not drool quite this much. No. Truly. No. A lot of drooling, to say the least. <laughs> so, um, so she, the blonde chick, gets turned into a vampire, and they bury her. What in six inches of dirt? Because when she returns, it's like literally, <laughs> you see the dirt just kind of. Hey, here I am. She just has to I sit up, and she's out. Get that the family's Renfield or whatever their little assistant is doesn't know that we need to chop off her head and stab her. He well, what did they say? should know what's going to happen to her if she was not dealt with. Absolutely. Well, they, they talked about it. Like, literally, they were looking at the body of the the uh, Romana, Romani woman, yes. and we're chopping her up. And they're like, oh, damn, we don't want that to happen to Sally or whatever her name was. So they're like, so they're hiding it from her, from yeah, hiding that's what her I'm from. Saying. Why, yes. why doesn't homie? He knows he's been serving he the, the crazy Radu family or whatever. <laughs> he's not. I don't think. Well, yes, you're right. He's friends with uh, he's the good like looking neighbor who came to borrow sugar and just is hanging out. He's clearly their like manservant. Well, he, he doesn't work. He just works at the hostel or whatever. But he's friends the with good-looking dude. Whatever it is, he's not in the. He's not They're like Redfield. The They're right not staying above, at the castle. Right above their house, in the open, is just coffins. They walk that, up because that was not the castle like a gallery. They go up, yes, they go up to the attic and there is a coffin there, but that's the good-looking vampire's coffin he's visiting. So he brought his crazy coffin with him. Good, so he can watch the girl sleep in the hostel? Yes. The like a gallery view up there. The We're evil, there. <laughs> it is. The evil Radu and his father, the king of the vampires, do not live in that place. They live in the ruins that the girls kept visiting. Because they didn't refer to it as the hostel. It was the abbey. This is where the monks stayed. Right. I, I'm using the word hostel. I don't even know if that word existed back in 92. Maybe, I, you know, it's a made up word. Who the hell knows? Sounds You're right. They're, they're, st- they're staying at the inn, whatever, the converted abbey. The Who's to say? Out. <laughs> they're doing something, basically. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. What else you got? Any last thoughts? We've been talking about this for 45 minutes. Uh, I'm looking slow. Oh, they were shooting people with rosemary beads. Holy BBs. How about that? Did you say rosemary beads? Rosary beads. You said rosemary. My love grows where my rosemary goes. No. 
I did not. That's a lie. <laughs> it's possible. Yes. Uh, when they pour out, they have the shotgun shell and they pour the shells out, the uh, the little pebble uh, pellets, and they put in a broken up rose. <laughs> now I'm not calling it a rosemary. <laughs> they pop out a rosary beads in there. And shoot, and the he only uses it on the one chick, the Romanian girl who gets transformed, like shoots her twice and wastes one both bullets. Boob, apparently, one for each boob. Absolutely, <laughs> put that away. Put it away. Right, and then they capture the young vampire with a giant Scooby Doo net. So yeah. first we tried. <laughs> yes. Coyote and Roadrunner Cage. Yes. That didn't work out, so we had to bring the giant Scooby-Doo net. So why did good-looking... Amazingly well. He, he was, like, tangling himself up in there. Uh, I always uh, love that. Uh, I can't get uh, rolling around in it. It's <laughs> And the thing is, why didn't he crack off his fingers and create his own homunculus to free himself? Come! Ah! Homunculus! <laughs> I mean, if one brother can do it. Pump my own gas. Finger. Finger. Snap, snap. <laughs> snap, snap. Well, it helps if you have an additional, you know, joint on your six inch finger. Just like, hey, let me snap a few off. Because then it doesn't really matter anyway. Now, the fingers are so long, it looks like an x ray of like bat wings, how it's all super long and curly. But then, of course, you end up having to walk around like, like you're a praying mantis. Yes. Vampira, where you're doing exactly. those things. You're not just swinging your arm because you're going to get a flicker flying off here or whatever. It totally reminds me. I'm just going to go off a little bit. Please. <laughs> That's all we've been doing. <laughs> On Halloween, yes. I make the kids do work. But the day the, after in Halloween. The, in the mines or what? When, when they've clearly ex exhausted and have been up all night eating sugar, playing video games with their freaks. I put on a movie. And okay. since I don't want to watch this freaking movie for the next three days, this year I decided I'm just going to put on silent films because they're about an hour. So the children were treated with The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Good one. Followed by, uh, what was this? Uh, Count Nosferatu. Yeah, Nosferatu. Nosferatu. And... Then I threw in The Mummy, although The Mummy's longer. Uh, yeah. And then the only other time I show movies is uh, during finals, because I don't have finals, and I got these damn kids for two hours. They're like, Miss, you're not going to play those movies anymore, are you? <laughs> the ones yes, I am. Words. Absolutely. Well, they have words, just without the sound, right? Little, like, There's, like cards. Disco organ piped over, and I, I why not? I'm on YouTube, so on, honestly, the Nosferatu, the captain of Dr. Caligari, I don't know if you know this, is very freaking old. So it was all like, yeah, things would be cut and things would go by, and the kids were like, and at one point, I looked and they'd all just put their heads down. <laughs> they had become. You know, the, the sleepwalker no, of the awful. captain. Absolutely. But, you know, uh, it's all education. It's education. So you say. Uh, any last thoughts about this, or should we go behind the scenes? I'm looking at my notes here. Scooby Please, Doo take Dad. your time. Uh, the smarter one lives. The right. The all die. Well, because what he bites, he bites the short-haired chick. But not enough to kill her. But she's like, oh, damn, he bit me. Uh, good looking, quote unquote, good looking vampire. You better just finish the job because otherwise I'll become his special vampire girl. But I, if you do it, then I can be your your special vampire girl. It and then they get in the coffin think, together. It made me think, you know, we have two kinds of vampires. We have Radu. We have the creepy, scary Vaughn vampire. Yeah. And then we have like the hot, sexy vampire. You keep saying not that hot or sexy. Yeah, I mean, in general, there are two types yes. of vampires. Fair. Well, not, I don't mean this one. <laughs> but reality, what would be really creepy because they're so mesmerizing, you know what yeah. I mean? Is you really need a creepy looking, horrifying vampire that causes these girls to go crazy like you would be a sexy vampire. 
You know what I, I mean? Because he's casting the spell. How much more horrific would that be? I if think he's all like decaying and gross. If, if he's freaking Count Orlock. Yeah. And this girl is just desperate to be with him. Absolutely. Why not? Let's Write it. Let's go. You're an ideas go. person. I'm an ideas. <laughs> Give me a 30 page treatment by the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go behind the scenes? Lay it on me. My only behind the scenes is a shot in four days. <laughs> I love that. And you see every ounce of those four days up You're- on that screen. I thought it, for especially like what a low budget this is and how fast they turned it out. I think they did a pretty good job. Oh, I'm honey. sure the stop motion animation, <laughs> they shot the film in four, in four days, the stop motion animation, six months. Yeah. This, this movie's a piece of shit. I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you that. Oh, uh. oh. Behind the scenes! This We said this earlier. This is the first American <laughs> film to be shot in Romania, particularly in the aftermath of the fall of communism in Romania. So you're so saying you it's go. historic. Okay. It's historic! The subspecies Minions were originally going to be played by live actors in costume, but director Ted Nicolau thought that the stuntmen were overacting and that it didn't w- look good overall. So he then they brought in Ewoks and he's like, get the hell out of here. He thought they were the ghoulies, basically. <laughs> the groovy ghoulies. The groovy ghoulies. Uh, Radu, the evil vampire, is named after Radu the Handsome, brother of the Romanian prince Vlad the Impaler, who was uh, the inspiration for Count Dracula. There you so go. wait a minute. So are we saying that the handsome brother is Vlad the Impaler? No, we're just saying they took the name from that guy. This so there you go. Enough impaling. I will agree with you with that. The song Nightwing by Swedish black metal band Marduk from their 1998 album of uh, <laughs> 1998 album of the same name is a cover of the main theme of Subspecies. And the song itself is about the main antagonist, Radu Vladislaus. So there you go. Love go the get the Scandinavians and their angry ways. <laughs> they love it. Let's go go uh, find some more churches, brothers. Uh, another deleted scene from the film features Radu turning into a rotted corpse while asleep during the day. The director had the scene removed after realizing the effects didn't look very good. <laughs> That's a good. <laughs> That is a sensible decision. Lesser well, directors would have been like, that cost me 20 grand. Leave it in. Leave it in. Well, did you notice in this movie, Radu is, is constantly just walking around with the sun out? It's he like, what the hell? Has some magic. Has well, some magic. His brother didn't seem that. He just kind of pulled his coat over until, yes. uh, you know, the henchman arrived and just happened to have his coffin in his wagon look like little house on the prairie if they just drove around with coffins pretty yeah. much ready to go he macgyvered it the film's trailer reuses music from Stuart gordon's from beyond <laughs> just the trailer just iconic just iconic i think that's about it let's talk about the cast and crew shall we Yes. Anyone work in porn? Anyone work on soap operas? I always wonder about that. Like, when their career did not work out as well as they hoped, where did they go? What did they do? You still got bills to pay. Uh, Angus Scrim, top build, played King Vladislav. You know him from Phantasm, Phantasm 2, Phantasm 3. And 2012's John Dies at the End. There you go. Unfamiliar. Unfamiliar. I mean, I can go through all these. Anders Hove played Radu. You know, he he played... Scandinavian. That seems a little Scandinavian. He was born in Greenland, which is not a place people are normally born at. So I don't know how that worked. Right? Um... Anders he Hove. When he want big city action. Pretty much. He um <laughs> he he is Radu in all of the sequels. He's the only uh actor who plays the same no character in all of the Radu movies. the way he's Radu. It's true. You know him from Nymphomaniac Volume One. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
no, General I Hospital. What? General Hospital? He was Caesar Faison for 154 episodes of General Holy Hospital. Shit. And Is it in the same time as Rick Springfield? Uh, I don't think so. This is starting in 1990. So I, maybe he went from this to that. I mean, hard to say. He was also in the soap opera Loving, playing the exact oh. same character for 30 episodes. Hey. And in 1998, he was in something called The Idiots. You know it, don't you? <laughs> I believe it's the greatest hit th- that has ever come out of Greenland. Uh, Michael Watson played Stefan, the good vampire. You know him from such things as General Hospital. Holy shit, it's a General Hospital reunion. He was in 182 episodes as Decker Moss. And (laughs) he was in 56 episodes of The Bold and the Beautiful playing Zach Hamilton. That there you go. Familiar. But what's funny is when I say 182 episodes, that's like two years. Yeah, if I say 56 long. episodes, it's like a little over a year. There's so, a whole General Hospital wiki just dedicated to him. There might be. No, I'm looking at it right oh, now. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's see. Laura May Tate played Michelle, the short haired love interest. Uh, oh yeah you're you, right he was on from 89 to 91 where he yep. said screw you i'm making films guess again <laughs> uh yes laura may he tate left, said Go ahead. he left town the reason he quit <laughs> he left town Maybe good thinking <laughs> laura may tate you know her as nadia and i love trouble from 1994 which is actually a real film that was with nick nolte and uh, uh julia roberts oh, so right. there you go she was in subspecies 1991 does not uh do the role because michelle is the female protagonist in all the subspecies movies this actress is only Michelle in the first movie. They recasted it from every other movie after that, and I don't know why. Oh, difficult. Interesting. Huh? She was in one episode of The Nightmare Cafe in 1992, which I'm unfamiliar with. And in 1991, she was in Dead Space, playing Dr. Marissa Salinger. So there you That's go. That's it, huh? Um, she did some other things. Not much. A lot of no, uh, no stints on General Hospital. No. Well, let me. You know, let me. Let me double check. It's possible that she was in one episode or something. Uh, she was uh, in one episode of Dallas. One episode of Matlock. One episode of Thirty Something. So, one episode of Sisters. There you oh, go. She hit them all at least once. At least once. Do you want to know about anybody else in this cast? Uh, Those are the top stars, aren't they? That's what what I thought. uh, Tits McGee. Which one? I feel since (laughs) she had to show her boobs that we should at least talk about her. Well, there's Romanian Tits McGee and American Tits McGee. Which would you like to know? I don't remember seeing anybody else's boobs. Did they both flash their boobs? They did. They did. The two girls who died. There was the American girl... Her boob is out. And then, uh, <laughs> okay, let me just talk about it. Lillian was played by Michelle McBride. She was the American girl who gets killed. You know her from one episode of Live from Lincoln Center in 1991. <laughs> <laughs> she was in uh, Subspecies. Yes. She was in The Mask of the Red Death from 1989, playing Rebecca. And something called Pray for the Chameleon, 1992. It says a TV movie, but this girl looks topless. So now I have to look at it. Check this out. What channel was this on? That was on Skidamax After Dark. The Red Shoe Diary, Chameleon. Oh, my goodness. Alexandra Paul, Daphne Zuniga, and James Wilder. Daphne Zuniga? Yep. All right. All-star cast. Pray for the Chameleon. I'm going to have to check that out. (laughs) Uh, Put that on the list. Why not? Uh, Irina Movila played Mara, the uh, Romanian uh, girl. <laughs> you know her from Subspecies? Something called Diplomatic Siege in 1999. Hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, Rose Namil playing the blonde lady, which doesn't sound good. The blonde and, lady. And Hotel Deluxe playing Sophia Magazian. Oh my lord, this is another language. Anyway, yeah, she had a lot of stuff in Romania, evidently. Well, maybe not a lot. She had a few things in Romania. <laughs> Shall we go? Should we talk about the ratings? We gotta go. (laughs) Uh, Subspecies. Currently. 39. 83%. Justified. 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 Based upon six reviews, no top critics. Do you know what the audience gave it based upon 2,500 plus ratings? 39. 52. Rotten. You can't deny it. I can't deny it. Uh, Let's see. It's no Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, but it'll do in a pinch. It'll do in a pinch. Um, I'm looking at the critics again. No top critics. No Rex Reed. No Bill Harris. Uh, they let's like see. a few films that have actually played in theaters. They do. They do indeed. C.H. Uh, Newell from Father, Son, Holy Gore says, <laughs> rather than go for... <laughs> exactly. Rather than go for a tired vampire story, Nicolau gives audiences an old school feeling flick that carves out its own strange vampire niche in the horror genre. Three out of five. Fantastic. Three out of five. Uh, Felix Vasquez Jr. from Cinema Crazed says it's definitely a full moon gem. Three out of four. Mm-hmm. So Sorry. there you go. Sorry. See? <laughs> what is what is your rating, Aaron? Oh, I am definitely giving this one a 2.5 super slobbly mucusy vampiric tongue down my throat out of five. Oh, Jesus. Boom. That's too much information. Uh, it's I'm... the kiss of the radu. It's the kiss of the radu. I'm going to give it 1.5 out of five <laughs> drooly, drooly vampire mouths dribbling all over the screenplay. Yeah, it, yeah. this movie is, like I said earlier, it's stupid and boring. It's wrong. Really, the I only have... good thing about it is it's short. <laughs> Again, so. make it into a musical would only have made it better. Uh, but I do have to say it is very reminiscent of a Raimi because somebody's got a drool in someone's mouth or it's not a Sam Raimi film. So this is a homage, clearly. There's definitely a lot of unmotivated drool. That, that much is true. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Academy Award nomination for unwarranted drool. Unwarranted? <laughs> Some species. <laughs> it's not just unmotivated, it's unwarranted, for God's sakes. Uh, so, thank you very much. Go to our page. Uh, we're everywhere. We're every GD place. We are on X, we're on Threads, we're on Instagram. Aaron, I didn't even tell you this. We are now on Blue Sky as well. Oh yeah. So in Blue Sky, if you don't know, in a bathroom in, in Baker. How about that? And we're the that Nicole. counts. That counts. You could be watching us on YouTube at the moment. So good times. Like I said, we're also on TikTok and Instagram. Pretty much every GD place the world has ever known. You can also email us at the podcast that wouldn't die at Gmail. Gmail. So. Uh, Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere the finer podcasts are available. So like, share, rate, and review. Won't you? Won't you please? Aaron, what is your social media situation? I got situation. Artsy, first dibs for Polaroid photography. I'm on the Insta, the Cult of Aaron. And I'm the moderator of the ever popular the podcast that wouldn't die at ticker talker so there you have it now each week we try to find i'm gonna have to download blue skies now or are you gonna just like wing that on your own i'm just i'm handling it are you 
and ripping the Band-Aid off Twitter. Is that what it is? I, I'm trying to find... Elon Musk would just come to your home and personally boot stomp you. It, I, this is what I've said. The day that Elon Musk says, hey, I'm going to charge you a dollar to use X is the day I stop using X. Dude, they've been floating that at Facebook every 15 minutes. People who I know have master's degree every now and then on at Facebook. I just emailed someone today going, dude, that's fake. I do not give Facebook the right to use my images. <laughs> right. I mean, that doesn't do anything. 25 with a master's degree. Right. I would think that you would be hipper to this. Yes. No. Well, I mean, and, and believe you me, Facebook sucks as well. Yes. Facebook sucks as well. Because it's literally like 15 ads for every one of my friend's posts oh, is, yeah. is what you get with Facebook. Honestly, Only I'm reason... flipping along and I'm like, I'm not following any of these posts. So like, they pick five right. of my friends and then the next hour, all it is is their yes. ads or suggested posts. Yeah, People are I've getting tired that. of hearing us bitch about it. It, it. Again, same thing. If Facebook ever says a dollar, I'm out. So each week, we like to include uh, comments, questions, thoughts, and feelings from the interwebs. Read so us here about we some are. people's feelings. Thoughts and feelings. Our buddy, The Vern, from Vern. Cinema Recall left a missive about funny games that I'm going to read to you. Oh, so hang on to your hats. Shit. I'm hanging I, on to something. <laughs> I, exactly. I know everyone hates what happens near the end with the remote <laughs> control, but I loved it. The point the director makes is that he wants you to be aware you're watching a movie. And that in a wasn't. movie. I thought I was watching a documentary. I, was, I thought I was watching my ring video. I thought I was living it. That you're that in a movie, you're at the mercy of what the director tells you. So it sets up characters and these situations, and you suspect a certain kind of ending. Haneke, the director, is basically criticizing his audience for enjoying violence in movies, which is why you don't see any in the movie. And you keep expecting it for something gruesome, but you don't. Many times in the movie, aka the director. Gives you outs to stop the movie. But we have an enjoyment to see people be hurt. And when the remote scenes happen, he is like, it's too late. You already chose this. It's masterful and brilliant. But I understand why people hate it. <laughs> Thank you, The Vern, from I, our friends at Cinema it it's, Recall. It's too Canadian. There we go. It's not Canadian at all. But there you go. He's not the director's not Austrian, I believe, and the actors are one is Australian, one is British. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Sweet Jesus! Next week, <laughs> next week, we have been threatening, cajoling uh, the a certain movie we keep talking about, The Legend of Hell House, starring Would Roddy McDowell. Go ahead. It freaked me out as a kid. It seemed like it was on every Saturday somehow in the evening. <laughs> every ghost, There's ghost rape. There's insanity. There's Roddy McDowell. There's Roddy frickin' <laughs> McDowell. Uh, who else is Roddy, in this? Roddy Par Piper would only have made it better. Pamela Franklin, Clive Reville, Gail Honeycutt, Roland oh, Gail Culver. Honeycutt's in it? Michael Goh, uncredited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Anywho, Roddy McDowell's the big draw, evidently. You can... Here's the thing. It would only it, be better if he was as Cornelius. As Cor... Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it is not streaming for free anywhere. If you want to watch it, you're going to pay $3.99. Apple TV, Prime Video, YouTube, Vudu, etc., etc., now, if you're going to pay $3.99, you can actually buy it on Vudu for 5 bucks. So I assume you already own it on Blu-ray. I'm going to own it after this. If I, pay, if I have to pay 4 bucks anyway, I might as well pay 5 and now I can watch Roddy McDowell whenever I want. So there you go. Uh, the Legend of Hell House. Again, Legend of Hell House. Not the Haunting of Hill House. Not the House on Haunted Hill. No. None of these. Uh, the leg, there's a legend. In all of those. 
And this is not, my daughter keeps saying, will you watch Hell House LLC, which is a more recent horror movie. I will watch that with her, but that's not this movie. This is a 1972 Roddy McDowell classic. So check it out. Uh, Send are any... there any Roddy McDowell movies that are not a classic? Like Fright Night, for example? <laughs> you... <laughs> Hoisted by your own petard. Anyway. <laughs> You're a little petarded right now. <laughs> Send in... Your favorite scenes, favorite quotes, comments, and questions, and we may talk about it on the show. So, thank you very much, and be well! Later, people. Remember to remove your makeup before you go to bed, children. Or or during the podcast, evidently. (laughs) 